Shake the Room, Fire Nation. JLD here with a rockin' audio masterclass on how the bootstrapped SaaS startup HRFs managed to grow 60% year over year in a competitive market. And to drop these value bombs, I've brought the chief marketing officer from HRFs, Tim Solo. Tim is a frequent speaker at marketing conferences around the world and an author of many data-driven SEO research studies. And he is just a person that's going to be able to break down how HRFs has grown 60% year over year and how we can apply some of their strategies to our businesses, Fire Nation, as the market gets more and more competitive going forward. So we're going to thank our sponsor and dive right in. Fire Nation, you know what's not smart? Spending a ton of time searching job boards that overwhelm you with so many candidates who aren't even qualified for the job you posted. Luckily, there's a smarter way to hire at ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology finds the right people for you and actively invites them to apply. That's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the US. That's based on hiring sites on Trustpilot with over 1,000 reviews. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. So Tim, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. Hey, what is up, Fire Nation? I'm super excited to be here. Uh, And in terms of something interesting about me, I think I I have never shared the effect that actually... Uh, back in my school, I was really good with mathematics and physics. And actually, all my relatives, they thought that I'm going to become an engineer. <laughs> but little did they know, now I'm doing marketing and they don't even know how to like do basic calculations in Excel or whatever. So yeah, my, my skills in mathematics... Uh, Right now, they do nothing for me. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I don't think that when you're 80 years old, you're going to regret not being able to do things in Excel. So uh, I think you might be on the (laughs) right path, Tim, for sure. And Fire Nation, as I mentioned in the intro, Tim is the chief marketing officer of HREFs. So we're going to be having a great conversation today because they've taken their bootstrapped, that's bootstrapped SaaS startup, that software as a service, and they have grown 60% year over year. And this is in a very, very very competitive market. So we're going to be diving into how they have managed to do just that. So let's talk about how marketing for a SaaS company is maybe a little bit of a challenge when you're the only marketing person on the entire team. How do you do that, Tim? More than three years ago, I joined the Chefs uh, as a single marketing person in the entire team. And uh, back then, our our entire team was like uh, 15 or 16 people. Uh, I don't really remember. Uh, and so I had the challenge in front of me to kind of build entire marketing operation from scratch, uh, which I never did before. So some people, when they join uh, kind of promising companies or startups or whatever, they already have a, like uh, they already had some success in their previous companies. So they're put in charge in that other company and they're building everything based on their knowledge. So that wasn't my situation at all. So I think. Uh, a lot of people can relate to that who are being put into positions that uh, they have never experienced. Uh, and like, I think I got super lucky uh, about the founder and CEO of Ahrefs because usually when you join a startup, the, the founder of that startup, they usually know a thing or two about marketing, business development, etc., etc., etc. And usually they know a lot about the so-called conventional knowledge uh, where you need to track every sing- single bit, where you need to build uh, user personas, where you need to build funnels, where you need to measure every metric, where you need to A-B test everything, uh, when you need to know your common conversion activities, etc., 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 etc. So in my case, uh, our CEO and founder, Dmitry, the founder of HFs, he's super technical. So his background is actually in development and he's really good at it. So I just shared that uh, I was good uh, back in school uh, at math. Well, I think that guy back in school, he was like 10 times better than me at it. So yeah, and the, the fact that he's super technical and not into marketing meant that he didn't really have any kind of KPI, key performance indicator or any goal objective other than team. Can you grow annual recurring revenue of HFs? Like, what do we need to do marketing-wise to grow the number of the customers that we have? That's it. These these were the the only metrics that he cared about, and these were the only metrics that I that I sort of needed to report on 
But in fact, I wasn't even reporting on them because Dimitri is perfectly capable of tracking uh, IRR on his own and the number of customers on his own. So the, the, the reason why I'm telling the whole kind of backstory uh, is that I didn't have to work on any conventional marketing. So I didn't have to like uh, create buyer personas. I didn't have to build funnels. I didn't have to care about our analytics. I simply looked at uh, our company, at our website, and our onboarding process, and our product. And then I compared to some other products that uh, SaaS products that I was using, the SaaS products that I was respecting, that people in our industry were using and respecting, and that uh, the companies that were growing well. And I simply kind of compared ourselves to those companies and thought, like, what is the most effective thing that I, as an individual, not, a, not an entire marketing team, can do to increase our revenue numbers, to increase the number of customers. Uh, and so like at that point, uh, three years ago, when we were just like a 15 person team, we had a ton of things to take, to take care of. And it all came down to like super simple things. Uh, for example, I realized that the, the copy of the homepage didn't quite uh, showcase the product in all its glory, didn't kind of showcase the, the benefits, like what do people get, et cetera, et cetera. I figured out that the uh, pricing page was a little bit confusing and people were asking all sorts of questions. So I was going bit by bit and you don't need an entire marketing team to work on, on the homepage, uh, on the copy of your homepage, right? So you're perfectly capable of doing it yourself. So Tim, let me stop you here for a second because I want to yeah. do a little bit of a recap so far for Fire Nation because there's been some really key points that I really want to make sure that you, Fire Nation, as the listeners are taking in and saying, you know, hey, how can I maybe apply some of these skills and strategies to my company? So number one, what was really coming up for me, Tim, when you were talking was a great Peter Drucker quote, what gets measured gets improved. And the reality is, you know, HRS would have been fine. They would have kept going forth. They had never hired a chief marketing officer, but the fact that they did, and now that is Tim's sole focus that he wakes up in the morning and says, how can I get the message out? How can I market this company better? Guess what? Everything about that gets better. Now, what was one thing that Tim did that I really loved that I want you to make sure you're applying to your business, Fire Nation? He looked at the competition. He said, okay, you know what? HRS hasn't been focusing on marketing for a while. They've been growing. They've been doing good things. But what is our competition doing? People that I look up to, respect, and admire. Like, what are they doing right now? And he went there. He studied them. And he said, I'm going to take the best of what they're doing. I'm going to apply it to our website. I'm going to apply it to our homepage. I'm going to apply it to our pricing page. I'm going to actually track conversion versions, like do heat maps. What do people do when they get to our site? Do they leave immediately because they're terrified because of all the copy? Or are they actually drawn into one central focus that they're going to take action on? And what kind of follow-up happens when they do take action on that, et cetera, et cetera. And all these things can make sure that your average value of your customer goes up, 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 because guess what? You are making the most of each and every lead that's coming your way. So let's talk specifically, Tim, about some effective marketing and growth channels for SaaS companies. And again, SaaS being software as a service fire nation. What are some of those most effective marketing and growth channels that you found that you've applied to HRFs that Fire Nation can really learn from? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think uh, there is something that I kind of luckily figured out uh, quite early. Uh, that the the biggest marketing channel that uh, any like SaaS founder can even dream of is the word of mouth. So this is your happy customers. They are basically a billboard for your product. If your product is so good that uh, your customers are getting value out of it, that they get the actual results that they're happy with, and they want to brag about these results to their peers, to their, I don't know, to family, friends, uh, and even to like everyone who is willing to listen to them, they can write an article or whatever. So like what I figured uh, in, in just, I think the first year of being with HRFs is that great product can generate enormous word of mouth because, and the way I figured it out is that uh, I simply visited a few industry conferences. And when I was approaching people and telling them that, hi, I, I am Tim, I'm, I have just joined HRFs, uh, are you using us by any chance and what do you think? And some people were saying, no, we don't know about HRFs, like uh, what does the tool do, do and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But others were saying, oh my God, you're from HRFs, like guys, you're so awesome. Yeah, they were making fun, like uh, we felt that the English copy is 
not so good. So like we could see that the company wasn't founded by Native American uh, speaking people. Uh, but the data, oh my God, people were so excited about the quality of data that we have, uh, about the tools that we have um, that, that help you work with the data. So I figured that our customers, people who are using us, they genuinely want to talk about our product. So I immediately figured out that my job as the CMO, or even like at that point, I was just a single marketer uh, in the entire company. My job was to give them the talking points. So all I had to do is I had to explain to our existing customers what is awesome about Ahrefs. Well, Tim, let me break in here one more second, because I feel like this is a great learning point as well for Fire Nation. I would love to maybe challenge you to this right now. And that is, Fire Nation, can you really in one sentence, describe what your business does that makes it easy for other people who consume your content, who use your product, who use your service, are you making it easy for them to share? So for instance, when people ask me, John, what do you do? My response is, I help successful entrepreneurs share their genius with the world. I make it simple, (laughs) one sentence. Tim is doing that right now. He is sharing his genius with the world. That's you, Fire Nation. And that's what I do. Can you say that in one sentence, Fire Nation? So in just one sentence, what would you say, Tim, about Ahrefs for your customers and your fans and your followers would be able to share with their friends? In one sentence, Ahrefs gives you the best data to make to make educated decisions to have your website rank better in Google and get more traffic from Google. And see, that's the thing, Fire Nation, that draws you in because who doesn't actually want to rank better in Google? And now Tim just shared, hey, my company helps you do that. He doesn't get technical and all that babbly stuff right away. Like he just says, this is what we do, period, end of story. If you're interested, I can help you learn more. So Tim, take it away. Yeah, so uh, I was about to share a quick story to Please kind do. of illustrate what kind of talking points you can give to our customers. And I think at that point, I actually got insanely lucky uh, because some guys uh, that, that run random, I think it was a marketing agency or whatever, they did a study of the most active uh, web bots, web crawlers. So Google has a web crawler. They, they have to crawl the entire web to know like whenever you add new pages to a website, Bing has to do that, Yahoo has to do that. And there are actually many crawlers Uh, even Facebook and Twitter, who are interested to kind of crawl the pages of your website and have uh, it in their own index. So these guys, I think they had uh, their own network of uh, 10K websites, and they did a study to see uh, which bots were the most active, like who crawled the most. (laughs) And like what they found out is that Ahrefs, had the second most active crawler <laughs> after Google. Wow, Bing, Yahoo, you better step your game up. <laughs> I'm not sure that I can safely say that today because for that I need someone to rerun the study and we don't want to rerun the study ourselves because like <laughs> people might think we are biased or whatever. Right. So it was a third party study who said that Ahrefs crawler is the second best after Google. And like the moment I saw it, I knew that I'm going to build my marketing strategy around that study. And so I started mentioning that fact everywhere. And as you can tell, I mentioned it even now. Uh, And so this is just one example of the talking points that can help the customers of your business explain to their peers uh, why they should use uh, your business and not any, any one of the competitors. None of our competitors could brag about having the second best crawler after Google, could, could, uh, could brag about having the kind of technology we have. And this is why we made it easy for our customers to persuade everyone around them uh, that Ahrefs is the best SEO tool out there, period. So yeah, uh, word of mouth is amazing uh, channel for growth. Uh, but for that, you have to have uh, awesome product because there is no kind of marketing trick that would make our technology, our crawler, the second best after Google, right? It's not It's not really marketing. It is the actual product. So you have to work on your product first and foremost, and then use all the advantages of your product, uh, all the unique selling propositions to market it. So that's the first channel. And as for the second biggest channel for us, it is, of course, content. Uh, what you're doing, John, is you're creating content so you know uh, how co- how powerful is content oh, yeah. for growing your business? And your business is actually grown 
entirely on content, right? Totally. It made sense for us to invest our resources into content. And three three years ago, back when I joined HRFs, just like any other startup bootstrapped or venture funded or whatever, they had a blog because like you can't just have a startup or a company that doesn't have a blog and that like who doesn't publish uh, <laughs> two, three articles per week. That's just a standard. That's that's one of those uh, check boxes that uh, chief marketing officer has to check uh, when he reports to his higher management. Like, OK, we have a blog and we're publishing three articles uh, per week. Uh, everything is doing is doing great there. Well, uh, they were publishing three articles per week back when I joined, but I realized that the blog wasn't going anywhere because the, the traffic was uh, kind of stagnating. It wasn't growing. So I needed to do something about it. And basically, I invested a lot of resources into bringing the the right kind of people to our content marketing team. And first and foremost, I, I was interested to bring the practitioners. I didn't want to bring copywriters who would just read articles by someone else uh, just rewrite them, them in their own words and publish on our blog. That's a bad strategy. That's bad content. No one would read it. So I tried to look for practitioners who would share their firsthand experience. And I think this is what kickstarted our blog growth. People started talking about it. People started linking to it. And of course, because we are an SEO tool, we know how to do our own SEO. So uh, if you look at the search traffic of uh, HF's blog, which you can actually do with our own tool with HF's because we are com competitor research tool, you'll see that it's almost a hockey stick. It is growing like crazy. Uh, this year, uh, we've reached uh, a milestone that I was setting for myself. Uh, that is 200,000 visitors per month from Google alone. So this is what we get to our blog. And this is an awesome growth channel for us because other than uh, sharing awesome content with the community and building our credibility, building our, you could say, thought leadership, uh, building our authority, et cetera, et cetera, and, and simply helping people other than doing all these things that everyone knows about. We do one other interesting thing that some way not a lot of companies are doing, and that is we're using the use cases of our own product within our own content. So whenever we publish an article, let's say about uh, how to perform SEO audit. We won't just like give some random tips. You need to do this and that and this. We would actually showcase some functionality of our own tools and tell you why our tools are among the best possible solutions for performing an SEO audit. And we do the same with like, I don't know, backlink research, keyword research. Take any SEO task that you want to learn how to do uh, check HREF's article about it, and you'll see some unique use cases of our tools. And those use cases, you cannot actually do them with any other tools. So people, after reading our articles, they genuinely wanted to become our customer to at least take a trial and give a spin to the tools and features that we were discussing in our articles. Okay, so Tim, I'm diving back in here because I really like to do recast for Fire Nation so we can really make sure that we're taking all this in. And Fire Nation, of for course. you, what I want to make sure you're getting is... Number one, you've got to make your product or service so good that your current customers are going to share with their friends, their family, their loved ones, their peers, their acquaintances. That's step number one. I mean, how many times do you think somebody's told their friends to watch a show on Netflix? Like, oh my God, House of Cards when it first came out. It's so good. You got to watch it. Like, that's what yeah. drove the viral growth. Like, it is so true, Fire Nation. Make that your primary focus. Number two, this content thing that Tim has been eloquating so well. So that's something that I've been doing, you know, from day one of Entrepreneurs on Fire. That's a key part of it. And I know, Tim, that a lot of people in Fire Nation are like, okay, this is a HRS is a company that's, you know, rocking it and they really get it. I mean, for a long time, if not still currently, you know, they had the most crawlers on the entire web, second only to Google. So how specifically with the data that you have and with everything that you do in this world, do we actually get customers from SEO? How do we get traffic from Google? Break down some specific strategies for us. The most effective thing you can do to get traffic from Google comes down to only uh, three things. The first thing is that you have to know what people are actually searching for in Google. Because unless you know what, what are their pains, what are their questions, what bothers them, uh, what kind of insecurities they have, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, if you don't know what bothers them, you cannot create pages on your website that would address it. You can come up with some random ideas. Okay, I think that, uh, for example, if someone is shopping for a bicycle, you might think that their 
concerned about which weight uh, a bicycle can handle. But that that's that might not be the case. So only like uh, 10 people from the entire world might care about their weight uh, and riding a bicycle at the same time. But all other people are mostly interested in how much the actual bicycle weights. Okay, so know what people are actually searching for in Google. Do you have like a website or a tool that you use to actually find that information out? First of all, there's a kind of free tool by Google themselves. It is called AdWords and the prim- primary use for the tool is to research the uh, the keywords that uh, that you will later advertise for. Uh, so when you do advertise in Google, Google will show you the information about how many searches uh, each of the keywords gets. But if you don't advertise in Google, if you're not running any ads, uh, the data that they will show you would be just averages. So they will say, uh, okay, this uh, this keyword gets from a hundred to a thousand uh, uh, searches per month. This keyword gets from a thousand to ten thousand. So it's far from accurate, and you only have to run ads to get this information from Google. So in our case, in case of Ahrefs, we have our own tool uh, with accurate, with kind of accurate data, like not with ranges, but with the actual numbers, how many searches each keyword gets. Uh, so you can verify your uh, theories. So whenever you you think that your potential customers uh, are searching for something, you can plug that uh, keyword, that search query uh, into Ahrefs and we'll show you if people are actually searching for that or not. Uh, and actually, it, it would be fair to mention that Ahrefs is not the only uh, like platform that has this kind of tool. There are many alternatives. So I actually offer people to uh, search in Google for keyword research tools. Uh, there are many people who are suggesting them, reviewing them, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of the day, you can take a few trials of different tools and try uh, which one of them you like best. Very cool. So let's get down to number two. Yeah. Number two is once you know what people are actually searching for, where the search demand is, you have to create the best possible page, the best possible search result for that query. Because Google, uh, their primary objective, their primary goal is to give people the best search result for whatever they're searching for. And they they have a ton of signals, a ton of clues that help them realize uh, if it's a good result or a bad result. For example, for the past few years, I'm seeing that people in the SEO industry are uh, debating whether Google can actually track the behavior on, on people on your website. So whenever someone clicks on one of the search results uh, and they land on your website, they might bounce right there or they might stay and read the article till the end. So uh, I think Google denied it quite consistently, but overall, a lot of people in the, a lot of SEO professionals believe that Google can actually track if people are actually reading your article or not, or if then, or if they're bouncing, because that is a great quality signal and that helps them understand if that article or if that page deserves to rank uh, in the top 10 search results in the first place. And even if Google is not using the uh, kind of behavior on your own website, which they could potentially track because they own Google Chrome, what they might do is they might track the actual clicks on the search results. Because think about it, they actually own the search results page. And whenever you click, for example, on result number three, the page opens and you realize that the page is like low quality or it doesn't seem like it's an authority page and it doesn't seem like this page answers your question, you close it, and what do you do next? You will probably click the other search results, the search result number one, number two, number four, anything but number three, which you already clicked. And by the way, if that happens too many times, you say, well, huh, Google's not giving me what I want. I'm going to go to Yahoo or Bing to see if they're actually (laughs) giving me better search results. And that, Fire Nation, is why Google is so stressed out about always making sure that you get the search result you want So make sure you give it to them. Keep going, Tim. Yeah, exactly. So Google is highly interested to figure out that people are satisfied with the search result uh, that they're browsing. So unless you create that awesome search result, which people will objectively uh, consider awesome, you won't be able to rank in Google. So that's just the the hard facts. All right, hit us up with number three. Number three, you have to build links. (laughs) So think about it. If you're Google, you're an algorithm. So, for example, you have 10, uh, 100 pages uh, about bicycles, like reviewing which bicycle is best and giving advice, and all of them are equally awesome. So even if you're a human and you you know a thing or two about bicycles, you have a hard time choosing which of these 
hundred pages, and Google actually is dealing with millions of pages on the same topic. But okay, let's let's uh, drill it da- drill it down to just one hundred, and you have to figure out which of these one hundred awesome pages, all of them are awesome in their own way, which one is better. So there's like, if you're human, it's like super hard. But if you're an algorithm, if you're a machine, it's even harder. So what they do, they look for links because links is an indication that some other people online who have websites, they have read this article, they enjoyed it, and they loved it so much that they want to send their own website visitors to this article. For example, John, if you read something awesome online, you will eventually link to it. Like if you're doing a podcast and someone mentions a great article, you will you will post it at show notes, thus linking to it and thus give, giving Google a clue that this article deserves to rank. And other than this, not all links are created equal. You, John, you're working on your website for a long time. I remember right. I was listening to your podcast episodes for quite a few years ago. Oh, wow, ago. nice. Yeah, I, I've listened to quite a few of them. Not all of them, of course, because you just <laughs> released too much, but those, the relevant ones for sure. There's no such thing as too much, Tim, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're working on your website for a very long time. You're building your authority, people are coming to your website, you're growing your traffic, et cetera, et cetera. And I can launch website tomorrow it's not that hard to register a domain name, to write a few articles, and I have a website. So if you and I will link to a certain page about bicycles, which link has more value? Clearly, it is your link that has more value. So I just want to, to give people a clue that it's not about the number of links. Uh, it's also about the quality of those links. Are these links coming from reputable sources? Are these links uh, coming from good websites or like uh, websites that were kind of artificially made to create some backlinks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, all in all, it comes to uh, three things. First of all, you have to figure out what your target audience is searching for, which would be related to your business because you have to make sales unless you your business is to make actual traffic. Uh, second, you need to create the best possible answer or the best possible search result for whatever search query you want to target. And third, you need to you need to have other people who have websites. You need to persuade them to link to your resource. Uh, oftentimes, when you have an audience like you, John, you just need to tweet it out. People will read it or you send the, it to your email list. A lot of people will get exposed. And as a result, people, if they find it useful, if they, fi- if they find it awesome, they will naturally link to it. But if people are only starting out, they don't have... Uh, the luxury of their own large audience who will uh, kind of link to their resource or who will amplify uh, and bring even more people to that resource. All they have to do is they will have to reach out to relevant people. So they will have to uh, find relevant websites in their industry, other bloggers, other companies who have blogs, etc., etc., etc. And they will have to write them personal emails and explain why these people should care uh, about that page. So that's it. And for that, again, it brings us back to the second point that your page has to be awesome because unless your page is awesome, no one will care to link to it and you will never end up ranking in Google. Okay, Fire Nation. So Tim just did a great recap, but I'm going to burst through it one more time just because I really have some key points we want to make sure that you're getting. So number one, know what people are actually searching for in Google. He mentioned tools like AdWords, Ahrefs. There's a tool that I like called Answer the Public, which is just free and you just type in a search word and it kind of shows you this web of all these things that people search for around. And then Number two, once you know what they're actually searching for, guess what? Create the best result for that query. It's called the skyscraper <laughs> effect, Fire Nation. Be the biggest and best skyscraper around for that search result. And guess what? People find you. They see you. Be the best in show because it is the best quality signal that Google has. And then number three, you have to build links. Tim got into that. So you just make sure that that's a focus of yours as well. And if you think value bombs have been dropped, you're right. But you have some more notes to take, Fire Nation. So you're going to be on the side of the highway for a little while longer. I'm sorry. But we're going to thank our sponsors and be right back. Fire Nation, I'm here with Ian Siegel, the CEO of Zip Recruiter. And Ian, with the unemployment rates below 4%, it is critical that employers do everything they can to attract the best talent. So, can you share some tips that employers need to be aware of? I think the number one thing that you as an employer need to be thoughtful about when you're writing a job description is. You're not just describing what you need from the candidates. You are also selling the candidate on what it's going to be like to work at your company. So don't just say, here's what I need from you. Say, 
here's what I need from you, but wait, here's what I'm going to provide for you in the way of an environment. We are a dog-friendly office. We're close to shops and restaurants. We promote from within. We have awesome benefits. We do happy hours every Friday night. Whatever your perk is, whatever makes you special, whatever makes your office special, those are the things that you want to put into your job description because remember, you're not just trying to tell them what you need from them. You're trying to woo them into coming to work for you. Fire Nation, I hope you were taking notes there because it's a job seekers market and job seeker expectations, they are high. And as entrepreneurs, we need to be creative and we have to consider the benefits that will set us apart from our competitors. That has to be considered. I mean, I know if I had a dog and I was looking for a job and that job touted the fact that they were dog friendly, that would be a huge plus. And when it's time to find the right talent, Fire Nation, there's Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right skills, education, and experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. As applications come in, Zip Recruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. It's no wonder Zip Recruiter is rated number one by employers in the US and this is based on Trustpilot ratings of hiring sites with over a thousand reviews. And right now, Fire Nation, you can try Zip Recruiter for free. Free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ziprecruiter.com slash fire. That's ziprecruiter.com slash F I R E. Ziprecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. So, Tim, we're back, and this is the reality. Most businesses fail when they have blogging as their main customer acquisition channel. I mean, way back in the early aughts, you know, the early 2000s, blogging was all the rage. Everybody was doing it. They had businesses and they were getting good results from it. And then as like 2010, 12, 14 came, podcasting became a great way to get content out there. YouTube with video and some other great social media channels like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram all started coming out with more opportunities to be found and to acquire customers and get content out there, et cetera, et cetera. So you make a pretty bold statement here and I want you to back it up. Why do most businesses fail with blogging as their main customer acquisition channel? Break that down. Uh, yeah, this is a great thing to to talk about because I see so many companies that that launch their blogs and by simply browsing what they blog about, I kind of understand that they have no idea how that blogging thing works and how it helps them to grow their business. So uh, let me share some uh, mistakes. I think it would be three <laughs> as well, um, one by one. So the first mistake that I see a lot of companies make with their blog is that they actually focus on the output other than being focused on the traffic. So a lot of a lot of uh, content marketing teams, a lot of writers, they have a goal of producing X number of articles per week. And this is their focus. So they're focused on hitting the publish uh, button X number X number of times per week. This is the wrong goal because it's not the number of uh, clicks on the publish button that makes you money. It's the amount of traffic that you get to your blog that brings you money. And the best way to get traffic is from Google because that traffic is targeted. So, for example, if you publish an article and then your strategy is to go and advertise it on Facebook, because on Facebook you can get uh, relatively cheap clicks, uh, what you're doing is you're interrupting people. So people are browsing Facebook, minding their own business, watching like the photos of their friends or latest news from uh, the pages and brands that they're subscribed to. And then there you are with an ad and you're trying to capture their attention with whatever article you have. So they don't really have the intent. They don't really have, uh, they don't really want to go and check your article. They're not really interested. So you have, you have to have a super compelling message to have them forget about everything else that they were doing and all those cat pictures that are next to your ad and (laughs) click on your article and start reading it and start caring about what you have to say in your article. But with Google, it's different. People go to Google when they want an answer. So whenever they type their question in Google and get some search results and they click on the search result, they don't care about Facebook. They don't care about their friends. They want to get an answer to their question. This is what I'm, this is why I'm saying that search traffic is the best one. So other than focusing on X article per month, your focus should be building your traffic from Google. So this is the first mistake that I see people make. The second mistake is that the traffic becomes a goal and the traffic is still a wrong goal, which is 
uh, very funny. And uh, actually, there's a story that I share every time that I talk about this. Uh, there's a big brand in the marketing space, which is called HubSpot. And I'm like, I, all, I almost feel sorry that I make fun of them every time, uh, but <laughs> stick with me. So they have one of the biggest blogs in the marketing niche. Uh, and I used Ahrefs, our own tool, to research like which articles on their blog are bringing them the most traffic from search. So when I when I entered their blog into Ahrefs and uh, browsed their top pages, I saw that the number one article that brings them the most traffic from search was on the topic of how to make a GIF image. This is like insane. And that article, that single article, at the time I was checking it, it was bringing them over 100,000 visitors per month from Google search, over 100,000 visitors per month. Back when I performed this research, our entire Ahrefs blog, it was getting less traffic than one single article on their blog. But guess what? If you're HubSpot and what they're selling is some uh, CRM marketing software or whatever, I actually never used it to be honest, but but still they, they're selling complex marketing CRM software and people are searching in Google how to make a GIF. How do you even make a connection between how to make a GIF image and selling to the person complex marketing software, which actually uh, not very cheap as far as I know. So the thing is, yeah, HubSpot is a big company, so they have salespeople and they can kind of uh, convert some of the traffic that comes to learn how to make a GIF image uh, into their email subscribers by offering them freebies, etc., 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 and then their big uh, sales team will actually reach out to these people by phone and try to persuade them, try to kind of gorge their interest. Uh, if these people are even interested in like uh, building their website, improving their marketing, etc., etc., and they might end up uh, selling them the software. But overall, if you're kind of a small business, if you're a bootstrap business, you believe me, you don't have resources to convert a person who is looking how to make a GIF image into a person who will purchase whatever you're selling. It, it is not going to happen. And last one, third mistake. Even if you're targeting the uh, search queries that are highly related to your business, let's say someone is uh, looking for, uh, well, if, if it, is, it would be related to CRM software, for example, how to better convert leads into customers. They're searching for that. And what a lot of companies do, because their marketing and content marketing department is kind of disconnected from the product department, they simply write a generic article on that topic without mentioning their product. And like I said, for us at Ahrefs, we have almost a rule that in every article that we publish on our blog, there should be some use case for Ahrefs so that people who are reading our blog, uh, they should get familiar with what kinds of tools we have and what use cases we can serve and how we can help them. So you can attract a ton of relevant traffic to your website. It could be highly relevant to your business, your product or service. but Guess what? If within your articles you will not pitch your product, you won't make any sale. Again, you can have all these pop-ups and offer all, all freebies and convert people into email subscribers first and then have some nurturing sequence that will kind of funnel people towards your product. But why would you spend your resources doing that when you can actually mention your product within the actual article and have that person interested within your product? at the point when, when they're reading the article, not in some point in future when you send them email number five pitching your product. So yeah, this is the third mistake. Does it make sense? Makes total sense. And Fire Nation, a quick recap here. Focus on the traffic, number one. Focus. Follow one course until that success. So have that traffic number you want to hit. Number two, is it the right traffic? Is it the right traffic for what you're looking to do? And that great little story about HubSpot for sure. And then number three, make sure that you mention your product and service in every single opportunity. And in every single article that Ahrefs publishes, they include a use case study. So people that are reading it can say, oh, I get what this article is trying to tell me and I get how I can use Ahrefs as a case study to potentially um, solve my obstacle and challenge that I came to this article for in the first place. So think of those three things. And random side note, Tim, have you read the book Disrupted? 
my misadventures in startup bubble yeah no so disrupted is a book that a 52 year old newsweek um reporter was fired from newsweek and he basically took a job with hubspot and it's about his yeah, misadventures that's, that's this book yeah, yeah for <laughs> a couple of years in hubspot and it's hysterical the guy is super funny he ended up getting hired away to go um write for silicon valley the tv show but he talks about those two years at hubspot and it just makes you realize that you know from the outside a company may look all big and shiny, but from the inside, watch out sometimes. So far, if you want a good, entertaining, and very insightful read, check out the book Disrupted for sure. Now, Tim, we need to stay cutting edge, my friends. We need to continue to get new ideas and new uses for our products because the times are changing, things are changing, Google's coming out you know, with new algorithms all the time and different things like that. So how do we do that? How do we get new, new feature ideas for our products? How do you do that at Hrefs? Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, I just wanted to follow up just just a little bit because I know that a lot of people there are afraid to talk about their product because they think that they will kind of seem salesy and they will seem like, I don't know, self-centered or whatever. Uh, but I think there's an awesome quote. I think I first heard it from uh, Derek, Derek Halpern, uh, the guy behind the uh, social triggers. I'm not sure like what he's up to sure. today. But what he said is, if you're not pitching your product to people who are potentially interested in, in it, you're actually doing them a disservice. You're actually making them miss out on something important. You're actually uh, not giving them a chance to improve their life. So I have absolutely no product, no, no, no problem pitching HFs in every single article that we publish because I know how good our tools are. So I absolutely have no problem telling this to people and they see how people are then genuinely amazed. So I don't have any problems doing this. And so I offer uh, listeners to think about their product this way. Your product, like you're working so much on it. It is awesome. You know that it helps people. Otherwise you wouldn't have paying customers already. So why not tell other people about your awesome product? Yeah, so in terms of uh, building your product further and figuring out what's the kind of next best thing you can do, uh, in again, if you go back to conventional startup knowledge, it's all about analytics. You have to be tracking everything. You have to be tracking every single feature. If people are using it, if people are using it, who are the, I don't know, customer profiles who are using this feature, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can get like to any level of complexity with that. Then you can like, uh, I don't know, there are some, uh, mind maps or whatever my frameworks for making kind of product assumptions. So should we go in this direction? Should we go in that direction? And then there's another framework for kind of validating these assumptions. This is crazy stuff. And the other day I was actually listening to, uh, some recording from a product conference. And the guy was also speaking on the topic of like developing your product, figuring out the features you have to build, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the bullet points on his list was use your product. And I was like, what? Isn't this obvious? Like for me, it comes absolutely naturally because I'm a marketer who is marketing a marketing tool. So I use our tool all the time. I think uh, out of all the people in the company, I'm probably the heaviest user and they know like almost every single feature, maybe besides some like super technical ones, which I don't even understand, but still I'm using it every day. I know like almost every use case and I'm actually teaching those use cases to people. And w in my actual work, I can see uh, some opportunities. So whenever I'm trying to do something and I cannot do this, I then go and pitch my idea to product team. Uh, we'll discuss it and release it and everyone is happy. So this is like the most obvious thing you can do. You have to be the user of your own product. If you're not the user of your own product, that I don't know why have you built it in the, in, in the first place. Did you think that this would be just a great idea? There, there are so many stories of failures when people were building something that they thought would be a great idea and not something that they needed themselves. So this is the first thing. The second thing is, again, it's like super obvious, but like a lot of people don't do this because like uh, the marketing and support department is so disconnected from the product department. And that is talk to your customers, talk to your audience, talk to, to your potential customers, talk to the people in your industry. In my case, when I just joined the Hrefs, one of the first thing that I did is I went to Reddit because like whatever you're doing, 
there's a subreddit for everything. Uh, just today I saw there's a subreddit for people who like to Photoshop human hands to birds. <laughs> there's literally it's... a subreddit for, for such people. So whatever you're doing, there's a subreddit for that. And in my case, there was subreddit where SEO professionals were hanging out. So what I did shortly after joining HFs, I posted there a thread. Uh, Hi, I'm Tim Solo from HFs. I'm interested to know like what you think about our tool set. Uh, like some critics, some, uh, I don't know, some good things, tell me everything. And so basically I think in those threads there were over 100 comments uh, because before me apparently no one in HRFs uh, tried to kind of communicate with the, with the industry, with the audience and ask them about their frustrations, about what they like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So people in your industry and especially your customers, they want to tell you a lot of stuff. So all you have to do is listen. And again, in my first year with HFs, I did a lot of Skype calls with customers. I was walking them through uh, our interface and they did Skype calls with people who uh, just joined HFs. And they did Skype calls with people who were using us for two years even before I joined the company. I talked with everyone. I went to conferences and they talked to people who never used us. I, I wanted to understand like what they're doing. I talked to people who used us. I tried to like, I, I, I was our own customer, but I tried to uh, get even more objective knowledge uh, of what's happening. And again, in our marketing team, we now have a rule because I went through customer support myself in my first year at HFs. I now have set this rule for every person who joins our marketing team. You cannot join our marketing team like uh, just by being hired. You have to go to technical support department to customer success department first and you have to be there until we decide that you're ready you know our tool enough your tool you know our customers enough you know our industry enough to get promoted into marketing department so this is this is uh, what works for us and even if you get promoted from the customer success team to marketing department you still have to do one day of support per month so that you would like be super close to the customers and understand them super well. And then if you do those two things, if you're close to your customers and if you're your own customer, you won't ever have a problem uh, figuring out like uh, what kind of features you should build and which direction for your SaaS or your business or your product is the right one and which direction is the wrong one. I, I'm actually, uh, I'm confident that you will have even more ideas than you will be able to take action on. So Fire Nation, as always, a little recap here. Number one, use the product. You need to absolutely be using this product so you can see what some shortcomings are, what you like about it, you want to amplify. Number two, talk to your customers. That is so key. Have those conversations because they're going to tell you what they like, what they don't like, how they heard about you, what they're actually struggling with as new things come along in this world that we live in. So Tim, there's a lot that we can talk about, but now we've almost been talking for 50 minutes. It's been a great conversation. I really want to wrap this up nicely. So Take a second and share with us just one thing that you want to make sure our listeners get from our conversation today. And then, of course, like you do in all of your blog articles, weave in how HREFs can help them with that. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the two things that I want people to understand is that it's really hard to, uh, to succeed with marketing if your product is awful. So first and foremost, if you're a business or owner, you should you should be like a product first company. You should care you should care about the product first uh, because then the marketing will almost take care of itself. At least the word of mouth will almost take care of itself. And in terms of marketing, uh, I want people to understand that search that Google is an amazing marketing channel. I don't even know like what can possibly replace it because think think of this right now. Hrefs blog, our own blog. We're getting over 200,000 people from search every single month. And all of these people are searching for things related to SEO. So we have a chance to expose them to our marketing tool set and to show them how we can help them solve their issues. A lot of people are thinking that SEO is like super, super complicated, that it's technical, that it's not for them. But in fact, it is easy and just like in this episode, I shared three, th three simple, simple things that you need to figure out uh, to start getting uh, traffic from search. So yeah, these are two things that I think are super important to understand. So Fire Nation, it's hard to 
to succeed if your product is horrible. Just remember that. It's really hard to succeed if your product's horrible. I mean, Tim, you can probably imagine this, but podcasters come to me all the time and they say, John, how can I get more listeners for my podcast? And you know what my <laughs> response is? It's not this growth strategy over here or this growth strategy over there. No, it's, listen, don't focus on getting bigger. Focus on getting better. Because I got to be honest to you, Fire Nation, a lot of people that have podcasts out there looking to grow their podcast are spending all of their time trying to market their podcast and get their podcast name out there and their podcast sucks. So guess what? Exactly. When they finally succeed and get people there and the people listen, they're like, this podcast sucks. And what do they do? They don't subscribe. They don't listen. They don't tell their friends about it. So you have to start at the core, period, end of story. And Tim, how can HREFs help Fire Nation as we grow our business empires? Actually, HREFs is not just a set of marketing tools. Uh, like I said, we have this awesome blog and we invest a lot of our own resources to educate people. So the best thing that how we can help people and it's actually entire, entirely free is with our content and not only blog because I know that a lot of people uh, are not fans of reading long articles and like uh, uh, like some people are just not readers they like to watch videos and for that reason we actually have a YouTube channel with awesome step-by-step -step SEO tutorials. So if you just go to YouTube and search for Ahrefs, you will find our channel and you can just browse the videos that we have, see the titles and look like if anything is relevant to you. If you want to learn about something about keyword research, if you want to learn how to build links, if you want to learn something about doing SEO audit, uh, you can learn that all from our blog and, and our YouTube channel. So I won't even be recommending our tools because the value comes from understanding how to do and what to do. The tools are kind of, they, they can only help you do that. And if you're thinking that SEO is not for you, that you're a business owner and you have some other priorities and objectives, think about it this way. Like I said, search Google is an amazing customer acquisition channel. And sooner or later, you will have to hire an SEO. You will have to have a marketing team. You will have to uh, hire people who will take care of your blog, of your website, etc., etc., etc. But then... How do you know that the person that you're interviewing is a good or bad SEO if you don't know anything about SEO yourself? So if you're not even thinking to do any of SEO yourself, it still pays to know how it works. And like I said, it's not that like it's not that complicated. It's not rocket science. Like uh, we're not Elon Musk's or whatever. You can learn it. You can wrap your head around it. And then once you be building your marketing team, once you be hiring uh, your uh, director of marketing, your content marketing team, team etc., you will be able to understand if these are good people or if these are bad people, if they will give you results or not. So, yeah, it pays to know uh, SEO for sure. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and you've been hanging out with TS and JLD today, so keep up the heat. And if you head over to eofire.com and just type Tim in our search bar, the show notes page is gonna pop up with all the links to all the awesomes that we've been talking about today, timestamps of our conversation, you name it, it's there. And I do recommend this, because I actually did this before our interview. I went over to YouTube, I typed in hrefs and I watched some of those videos and fire nation. That's exactly what Tim says. They are so entertaining. They're so valuable and they are valuable for your business because they're teaching real things to bring real traffic to your real website. So hrefs, you spell that a H R E F S that's a H R E F S. And Tim, any call to action or thing you want to share before we say goodbye today? Uh, that was actually the call to action. Yeah! Uh, go, go watch our YouTube videos, go read our blog, and you'll get a ton of value, I promise. You'll get it, Fire Nation. I've got it. You will too. So, Tim, thank you, brother, for sharing your truth with Fire Nation today. For that, brother, we salute you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks a lot, John. Hey, Fire Nation, today's value bomb content was brought to you by Tim and the whole HRS team. And if you are ready to accomplish just that one big goal, well, the Freedom Journal is key because when you follow the step-by-step -step guidance that I provide, you'll accomplish your number one goal in 100 days. I mean, imagine that. Visit thefreedomjournal.com and you can even use promo code podcast for a nice little discount. And thank you for listening to my podcast. I'll catch you there, Fire Nation, or I'll catch you on the flip side. 
You know what makes ZipRecruiter so smart? ZipRecruiter doesn't wait for the right candidates to find you. It finds them. Its powerful technology scans thousands of resumes to identify people with the right skills and experience and actively invites them to apply to your job so you get qualified candidates fast. That's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. That's based on hiring sites on Trustpilot with over 1,000 reviews. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire.